Today we are going to look into Psalm 98. Psalm 98. But before we read the psalm, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you bless the preaching of your word. We pray that you speak to our hearts. Bless those who were not able to join us today for worship service, wherever they are. We ask that your blessings be upon them. May your grace fill this place and fill our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, we are trying to understand what Christmas is all about. And we saw that Christmas is the hope of the gospel. We saw that Christmas is the peace that comes from God. Today, we are going to talk about joy, the joy of the Lord. Psalm 98. Daniel. Yes. Joy. Psalm 98. This is what the Word of God says. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. He has remembered. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for He comes. To judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. Uh, Some of you might ask why we are talking about Psalm 98 when we are trying to understand Christmas. And the reason is, is because there is a a well-known hymn by Isaac Watts, Joy to the World. And historians say that he based Joy to the World on Psalm 98. And it's interesting uh, because Isaac Watts, when he wrote the song, the hymn, Joy to the World, he used Psalm 98. And it was a time when It was tough to be a Christian. Uh, It was around the 16th century when there was a persecution against those who would not submit themselves to the state church, the Anglican church. And there was persecution against those who would not submit themselves to all the rulings and regulations of the Anglican church, the state church. Uh, It was a time when believers, ministers, because Isaac Watts was a minister of the gospel, he was threatened by going to jail if he did not comply to the rulings and regulations of the state church. And so Isaac Watts was, he suffered persecution. Uh, Not only Isaac Watts, but his family. His father was also a minister. And historians tell that uh, Isaac Watts' father, he was in prison because he would not submit himself to the state church. Uh, And after he was released from prison, his father lived like an exiled, running away and hidden because the church was the state. And the state was throwing everybody in prison who would not submit to all the regulations and laws of the state church. 
Remember that at that time when the Anglican Church, the state church, they start persecuting Christians, 2,000 ministers, 2,000 pastors, they were ejected from the church because they would not do the worship service like the Anglican Church told people to do. And because these ministers refused to follow the book of the Anglican Church and to follow all the regulations, they were declared dissidents. And Isaac Watts lived in this time when it was tough to be a Christian. You were persecuted by the church. You were persecuted by the government because it was the same thing. And you were, you, you, you were asked to compromise. You were asked to deny the truth of the word of God and the gospels. So at that time, many people, they were persecuted. But it's interesting that when Isaac Watts, he was writing a hymn, a, a song about the Lord. He talks about joy. Amen. Isn't it interesting? When you're facing persecution, when your whole family is facing persecution because of the word of God and the gospel, you talk about joy? Maybe we could write a song or a hymn talking about our distress and suffering, about the pain, about how hard it is to be a Christian, how sad it is to face persecution, how we need and long for deliverance and salvation. No, but it's interesting that in the midst of all the persecution, in the midst of all the hard times Isaac Watts was facing, he focused on Psalm 98 and he wrote a hymn, Joy to the World. How can we be joyful in the midst of suffering and distress? Why is Christmas about joy? How can you be joyful? How can I be joyful when this time of year is not happy and joyful? But for some people, Christmas season is kind of gloomy and sad. How can we restore the joy? How can we be joyful? Amen. How can we enjoy Christmas In the real way. That's what we are going to see in Psalm 98. The problem is, is because when we talk about joy and we don't understand what joy is. uh, So we tend to think that joy, it's something that comes from the outside, the circumstances. So in order for us to be joyful, in order for us to enjoy the joy that we all need and long for, we turn to the things that are around us. And we we try to count how many gifts we have. We try to, to count how many friends we have. We try to count how many good things happen to us throughout this year. Maybe we look at in our balance and in our bank account and we try to be joyful. And maybe we, and we, we, we look at all these outside circumstantial things in order to be joyful. But the reality is that when we look to the things around us, when we look at the circumstances, there are no reasons for us to be joyful because everything around us are temporary. You cannot guarantee that the job that you have right now that gives you joy right now will give you joy forever. Because the reality is this job is here today. It can be gone tomorrow. The same way about our bank account. I can have a bank account that now I look at and brings me joy. But then there's no guarantee that this will remain forever. The reality is uh, things can happen in life that we will have to spend all we have in order to make up for that need. What's going to happen to our joy? Also, the same we can say about the 
amount of gifts, amount of friends, the people around us. The reality is all that we have is here today, but there is no guarantee that they will be here tomorrow. And Isaac Watts, he knew one thing. When he turned his eyes, not to the things around him, because his circumstances were so distressful, but he turned his eyes on the Word of God. And, and he turns his focus on to the Word of God. And Psalm 98 tells the real source of joy, the Lord Himself. You know what? You know the problem? Why one day we are joyful and some days we are sad? Why we some days we are all happy and all joyful and other days we are sad? Because we forget one important thing. That the real source of joy is the Lord. And once you set your heart on the Lord Himself, then you will experience a more stable source of joy. And you will be able, regardless of the circumstances, to experience joy every day in your life. Because the Lord never changes. The circumstances change. So if you put your heart on the things that change, your joy will change. will be there one day, the next day will be gone. But if you put your joy on the Lord, if you focus on the Lord and who God is, then your source of joy will be the Lord. And because He never changes, He's always there and He's there forever, you will be able to experience a more permanent, a more stronger, a more firm source of joy in your life. The Bible says that joy is not an emotion, it's a state of being. You're not only, you, ex, you not only experience joy, but you are joyful. You are joyful. You are joyful because it's not just emotion, it's a state of being. And the Psalm 98 says that this state of being, being joyful, is because of who God is. And Isaac Watts, when he wrote this hymn, Joy to the World, he was thinking about that. He experienced that in the midst of all the hardships and suffering because of the persecution he was facing. How can you have joy in times of uncertainty? How can you have joy in times of sadness? How can you have joy? You can have joy when you focus on who God is. And today, we are going to look into who God is in Psalm 98. Because the Psalm 98 will present God in three ways. God, our Savior. God, our King. And God, our Judge. Look what the Bible says. Verses 1 to 3 about God, our Savior. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. How can you experience joy in the midst of suffering? When you turn to the Lord. When you focus not on the circumstances or the face and pain you're suffering. But when you focus on God, you understand that God is our Savior. And then you can experience joy in the midst of suffering. That was the secret that Isaac Watts learned when he turned his eyes to Psalm 98. The th first three verses highlight something about God. That God is the Savior. 
And he not only is the Savior, but he shared word of salvation with his people. Look what the Bible says in verse 2. The Lord, the Lord has made known his salvation. What does it mean? It means that God, when his people is suffering, He's not a God who crosses his arm and he just watches from his throne. God is in heaven and looking at his people suffering. And okay, let's see how these guys work this out. Let's see how they deal with this suffering. Oh, let's see how Daniel's doing. Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes we think that God does that. Sometimes when we suffer for a long time, we, we think that God has forgotten us. Maybe that's what the people of God thought when God was silent for 400 years, when there was no prophet. But the reality is, regardless of the circumstances and how tough, how hard the circumstances look like, God is never far away. Even though it seemed that God was silent for 400 years, God was working His plan and God was still working in the lives of His people. Remember Joseph. His brothers threw him in a pit and sold him like a slave. He went to Egypt and he worked as a slave for so many people. He suffered injustice. He was thrown in prison. And how many times Joseph prayed and prayed and asked God for deliverance, asked God to do something. And today we know that even in the hardest times, God was there leading and guiding Joseph's life. And it's the same way that God leads and directs my life, your life. Even though there are times from my perspective, God seems to be quiet. God seems to be silent. The reality is that God is never far away. He's always near and God is always at work. That's why in verse 3, the psalmist says, The Lord has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. The love of God is a faithful love. God is faithful and he's never in a relationship that, okay, you handle there your stuff while I'm going to take care of this business here and I'm going to come back, okay? Hang on, wait, I'll be back. No, but God is always with his people. And the Psalm 98 is a reminder. That's why the salvation is proclaimed is revealed to all the ends of the earth because God is the Savior of His people always because His steadfast love and faithfulness is with His people. That's why there is a reason for the psalmist to sing to the Lord a new song. There is always a reason to sing and praise a song to the Lord because God is our Savior. That's why regardless of the circumstances and all the oppression Isaac Watts was facing, he was able to sing joy to the world because God is our Savior. When Isaac Watts turns his eyes, not to his own circumstances, but to God, he understood that there was always a reason to be joyful, even when circumstances are distressful. Because not only God is our Savior, but God 
is our king. Look what he says here in verses 4, from verse 4 to verse 6. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Remember that Isaac Watts lived in a time when there was no distinction between the government, the ruler, and the church, the patriarch or the pope of the Anglican church because they were the same person. The head of the government was at the same time the head of the church. And whatever the head of the church said became the law of the country because they were the same person. Remember when the church starts persecuting you because the church is the government. The quote-unquote pope is the king. Remember, when, uh, rem- uh, try to imagine a time when You want to be faithful to the Word of God. And because of your faithfulness to the Word of God, in your heart and in your conscience, you say, I'm not going to follow what the church is saying because I believe the Word of God says another thing. And because of your faithfulness to God and to the Word of God, the church declares you a criminal. The king is the head of the church. And he's telling that you are a criminal. And what you're doing is wrong. And you are threatened with prison and all the sanctions of the government. You are not allowed to be a civil servant. You are not allowed because to be somebody who was not compliant to the rules of the Anglican church at that time, you had a civil disability. So you were forbidden from uh, having all these civil uh, 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 offices. and, And it was hard to be a Christian. But still, for Isaac Watts, he was able to sing joy to the world because Psalm 98 says that God is our king not the king of England not the king of the Anglican church our king because we confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior God is our king And he says in verse 98, make a joyful noise, sing praises, make a joyful noise. He commands his people, the psalmist commands his people three times, make a joyful noise, sing praises, make a joyful noise, regardless of the circumstances. Even when times the king, the the, the human king seems to be persecuting you. Don't be afraid, but make a joyful noise. Sing praises to the Lord. Why? Because the real king, the true king is the Lord, our God. You think that the king, the government has control over your life? Forget about this. Who really controls your life and everything, governments, kings, emperors, is The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, our God. He is the real one. He is the big shot. Don't be afraid. Instead, make a joyful noise. Sing praises because our God. He is the King and He is the real one in control of everything. Of everything, including governments, including my life, including your life. You have all the reasons in the world to be joyful, regardless of the circumstances. Why? Because 
God is our king. And because God is our king, don't be afraid. Because one day, he will come to judge. Imagine someone who wanted to be faithful to the Lord and to the word of God. And instead of being praised and receive blessings, he's facing persecution. Have you ever faced injustice in your life? You were wrongly accused or you had all the good intentions, but then people turned that in the wrong way and they accused you of something that you never did or had no intention of doing? Isaac Watts had all the reasons to be bitter. And he could have written all hymns and all songs about bitterness and suffering and sadness and how unfair the world is. But instead, he writes joy to the world. Because he understood that not only God was our Savior, that God is our King, but God is our Judge. Look what it says here in verses, from, verses, from verse 7 to verse 9. Look what the psalmist says from verse 7 to verse 9. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Isaac Watts understood when he turned his eyes to Psalm 98. He understood that God is our judge. So the injustice that he was suffering would not stay there forever. But one day, God would come to judge and to vindicate his cause. Not only God would come to judge us as believers, as sinners. Not only God would come to judge all those who remain unfaithful to the word of God and did not accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But God would come to make things right. Not only to make things right for others in regards to their faith, a faith. But God would also make things right for us who long for justice, who long for someone to come and make things right for us. Because God knows that it's tough and it's hard to face injustice. That's why in verse 9, after saying, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. The reason in verse 9 that the psalm, psalmist gives us to praise God is, For He comes to judge the earth. If you're thirst, thirsty for justice, don't worry. One day, God will come to judge the earth. To make things right, for he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The injustice you're facing, the ungratefulness, the, all the things that you have in your heart that you want people to know, that you want things to be plain so everybody can see and things can be made right. To you and with you, God will come and bring justice. That's why when Isaac Watts, even though he was facing injustice and persecution, he was able to write a hymn about joy to the world. Because God one day would come to make everything that was wrong in his life and in the world, one day God would come to make. It right. Christmas for us is not about the circumstances. And the problem when you make the circumstances your Christmas 
is because the circumstances will become your source of joy. And as you might have already experienced, when you put your joy on the things of this world, joy will come and go. Joy will not be as deep as you long for, and it won't be as permanent as you wish for. Joy will be temporary. But if you put your joy on God Himself, you will be able to experience a joy that even when the world around you is falling apart, you will be able to sing joy to the world. Because your joy will be your God. So today, I would like to invite you to pray with me and to ask God to give you this joy. So you can experience God as your Savior, God as your King, and God as your Judge. Ask God today to come to your life and allow you to experience this joy that comes only from God. And you can only experience that if you open your heart to Jesus Christ. So today, Christmas... As we turn our hearts and as we focus on the real meaning of Christmas, I ask you to open your hearts and focus on the real one who can bring hope, who can bring peace and brings joy to our lives. Jesus Christ. So I ask you to believe that Christmas is about Jesus. And if you believe in the hope of the gospel, if you long for the peace that only comes from Jesus, then you can have joy in your life. A joy that even governments and circumstances and hardships in this life cannot take away from you because joy will come from Jesus Himself. So just open your heart today. And ask Jesus to come and fill your heart. Accept and acknowledge that this joy cannot come from the world and cannot come from you. Only comes from God. Acknowledge that you as a sinner cannot make joy happen. That every joy that you produce is tainted, corrupted by sin. It's not true joy. And acknowledge that true joy comes only from Jesus. And ask, Jesus, come and fill my life. Fill my heart because I want, I need, I long for this joy. I invite you to come and ask for Jesus to enter your life, to fill your heart. And once you do that, I do believe, I do believe that joy will come. Because Jesus will be there in your heart if you pray and ask with faith, by faith. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much that you gave us your word. And you allow us to see and understand the real meaning of Christmas. That Christmas is not about the things that we have. But Christmas is about who we have in our hearts. That joy comes not from the things outside, but joy comes from who is in our hearts. And Father, we want to experience true joy, the joy that we see here in Psalm 98, a joy that is permanent. A joy that lasts forever. This joy that comes from who God is. So Father, we want to experience. We want to know. We want to have a better and deeper relationship with God our Savior. With God our King. And with God our Judge. And today we declare and we acknowledge. We recognize that Jesus is our God. 
That Jesus is our Savior. That Jesus is our King. And Jesus is our Judge. So Father, we ask by your mercy and grace that you fill our hearts today. Fill the hearts of all those who come to you and ask for this joy that only you can give. We acknowledge, Father, that the world cannot give this joy. That world can give only a false, a fake joy. But we want the true joy. We want genuine joy that comes from you, Father. So come. Come to our hearts. Break every chain. Destroy every barrier, Father. And come and dwell in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and remove our scales. And let us see our God, Jesus Christ. And let, us out, let our eyes contemplate our Savior, our King, and our Judge. So we, may, so we can experience joy. And we can live a life that honors you and praises you every time, all the time. Father, come in the midst of our brokenness and bring joy. I pray, Father, for all our brothers and sisters who for some reason, the holidays, Christmas is not a good time of the year. It's a time when we remember sad things. We remember pain and suffering that happened to us. And don't easily go away. Father, I pray for those who Christmas is a time of mourning and suffering. I pray that they may be able to experience joy. Joy that only you can give. May Christmas, this Christmas, be a season of healing and renewal. Father, I pray for your people. I pray for your church. And, our, and thank you, Father, for this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me close us with a word of prayer. Father, as you send us back to the world, to our mission field, help us to be faithful to the Great Commission. Help us to obey the greatest commandment. Father, I pray that you bless us, O Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.